Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the puffer jacket to work out whether it's a timeless garment or just a trend. Recent years within the world of menswear have seen an uprising in the use of puffer jackets and coats, or as they're also known, down jackets. While wearing a coat when it's cold outside certainly isn't a new idea, we've certainly seen an increase in people wearing puffer jackets whenever they feel like it. Not only are they seen as an extension of streetwear, but we're also starting to see an adoption of puffer jackets being used over tailored garments, and even other elements of classic menswear. And this piques our interest as this type of garment has traditionally been seen as a casual garment. So are puffer jackets entering the classic menswear space, or is this just a flash in the pan moment? First, let's take a closer look by defining. In simple terms, a down or puffer jacket consists of a simple coat, constructed from waterproof fabric, and filled with either goose or duck feathers. The variations of the names comes from the fact that they are filled with down feathers, or because they look puffy when they're filled. It's the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man. Okay, perhaps not that puffy. That being said, I can certainly understand the similarity between the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man or the Michelin Man, as the puffy look is achieved through lines of horizontal stitching throughout the body and sleeves of the coat. These lines of stitching are actually there for a reason, beyond simply the jacket style. Much like how a down-filled duvet has separate stitched pockets for the feathers to reside. The same is true for puffer jackets, with the stitching helping to control an even distribution of filler so as not to have it fall to the lowest points of the jacket. Where the puffer jacket differs from the duvet design is the lack of diagonal stitching. This is, however, present in another jacket type that we've previously covered, the quilted jacket. This jacket features two sets of diagonal stitching which forms squares or diamonds once complete, and much closer resembles an actual bedspread than the stitching of that on a puffer jacket. The result is a slimmer and tidier jacket that doesn't have the chunky profile of a puffer jacket. And you're also likely to see quilted jackets finished in different fabrics. I like the puffer jacket, which is typically only seen in some form of a waterproof fabric. Both the quilting and the waterproof fabric are intrinsic to the sartorial makeup of the puffer jacket, as it is first and foremost designed to be a practical garment. The creation of the puffer jacket is widely credited to George Finch, an Australian chemist and mountain climber who in 1922 constructed a coat out of balloon cloth and eiderdown feathers. 14 years later, in 1936, another version of the puffer jacket was created by Eddie Bauer, an adventurer who almost died from hypothermia during a particularly hazardous fishing trip. Yikes! The most adventurous fishing that I do is at the grocery store for fish sticks. The following year, a similar jacket of a downfill design was created by hot couture designer Charles James. His particular design, which he labeled the pneumatic jacket, proved to be intricate and quite difficult to replicate for manufacture. So it was in 1939 when Eddie Bauer's Skyliner jacket hit stores and became the first patented puffer jacket. Puffer jackets continued to enjoy popularity throughout the following decades and became a reimagined garment in the 1970s. Designer Norma Kamali created the sleeping bag jacket, specifically marketing it toward a female audience. This iteration of the jacket has become a firm favorite in her collections, with multiple different updates to the design happening throughout the years, becoming a desirable jacket for women and men in the process. This iteration of the puffer jacket was made possible by an inclusion of a synthetic alternative to down feathers. A necessary step here is this would make the jacket both lighter than with the inclusion of down feathers and also cheaper to produce. The 1980s saw a particular interest for neon puffer jackets in Italy. Meanwhile, in the States, a certain Marty McFly was popularizing the puffer vest and his multi-layered iconic costume from Back to the Future. During the 1990s, a younger generation of puffer coat wearers found a practical use of that jacket to keep warm at chilly nighttime braves, and puffer jackets would continue to be linked to the music industry into the following decade in the United States, where hip-hop artists would take to a cropped puffer jacket as a style staple in the new millennium, something that Drake didn't appreciate in 2015. Am I right, Drake? Indeed, the puffer jacket has seen a great variation of uses, from a practical piece of exploration equipment to a high fashion garment that represents being a part of a particular group or subculture. Where the puffer jacket stands today seems to be in two very particular categories. You either have the descendant of the high fashion puffer jacket, emphasized by the full-on athleisure-infused streetwear look, or you have a contemporary take on classic tailored menswear, with a puffer jacket added on top. Now with this in mind, you may be wondering, can I wear a puffer jacket if I love classic style? Okay, this is where things seem to get a little bit tricky. After all, the type of classic style that we all enjoy tends to do with looking sophisticated, elegant, and refined. Putting it as delicately as possible, puffer jackets really aren't any of those things. It's rare to see anything chunky or relatively practical within the realms of classic style. 
Instead, clothing and accessories that have a particular function are designed to be beautiful, almost hiding their intended function. An immediate comparison might be a pair of gloves. Sure, you can wear a pair of cashmere wool gloves to keep your hands warm, but they end up looking chunky and perhaps a bit juvenile. Instead, classic style supports the wearing of leather gloves that are lined with cashmere wool. The leather covers the hands in a way that doesn't distract but enhances the overall look, while the cashmere keeps your hands warm. And the result is a more formal, higher-end look. Thinking about puffer jackets then, you could easily consider that a true winter coat made from a sturdy heavyweight cloth might keep you just as warm as a puffer jacket might, all the while working more harmoniously with your classic wardrobe elements. The problem here is that many readily available modern day overcoats are simply not heavy enough or robust enough to keep you sufficiently warm in chilly weather. So unless you're able to afford what's likely to be an expensive bespoke overcoat, you'll have to look for a vintage model. And although Raphael and Preston are on hand to walk you through some expert tips in this video, the reality is you'll have to still invest an element of time, energy, and money into finding a vintage overcoat that works for you. So the puffer jacket is a readily available, attractive choice for many of us today, especially considering there are climates where it can reach well below freezing during the winter time. But there's still the challenge of making it work with a wardrobe full of classic pieces. First, let's determine what a puffer jacket would likely go well with. You'll already have had a heads up if you've seen our take on the iconic Montclair jacket. But the answer here is, unsurprisingly perhaps, casual clothing, but probably still more formal than a Spider-Man suit. No hard feelings, Andrew. We still like you in No Way Home. You are amazing. I can take that. You are amazing. Thank you, yeah, thanks. Will you say it? No, I kind of needed to hear that. Thank you. Think of things like a well-cut pair of denim jeans, where two items of clothing born out of practical need complement each other well. And there are also sweaters and other knitwear items that you can consider wearing with a puffer jacket. A particularly elegant choice would be a turtleneck, therefore allowing you to forego a scarf in the pursuit of increased ease of wear. Should denim be too casual for your tastes, consider another classic winter wardrobe staple, corduroy trousers. A pair of these sturdy pants will see you through the colder months very well, and the subtle ribbing will complement the lines on a puffer jacket. But what in your wardrobe is likely to look strange or out of place with your down jacket? For us, the immediate answer should be tailoring. And by that, we mean any item of tailored clothing that is designed to be worn in a formal style. That means no suits, odd jackets, or formal pants that have a sharp crease to the front. And as an offshoot to this rule, you should also consider formal fabrics to be a no-go to. Worsted suiting wool, fine flannel, and even some of the sharper dressier tweeds should be left in the closet as opposed to being paired with a puffer jacket. There are several reasons behind this. Puffer jackets don't possess elegant lines to create a harmonious style language between formal clothing and suiting. The noisy technical fabrics of a puffer jacket betrays the elegance of the look you're trying to achieve. And as unfortunate as it is, utility is not designed to look good, whereas looking good is the entire purpose of your suit. Now we aren't going to leave you out in the cold. So here are a few of our favorite alternatives to a puffer jacket. We feel they fit better within a classic wardrobe. The immediate alternative to a puffer jacket would be the parka, just like the Montclair jacket beforehand. Raphael has given us his in-depth thoughts about one of the iconic parka jacket styles out there, the Canada Goose jacket. And you can check out that review here. So the reason we've gone with a classic parka over a puffer jacket is mainly because the styling is much more in line with what we love about classic style. The traditional khaki green of a parka is much easier to pair with traditional menswear colors. Think of neutrals, grays, browns, and navy blues. This is helped by the fact that parkas are usually constructed from a cloth that possesses a matte finish, instead of that shiny look that usually comes with a puffer jacket. Now if you ask us, there's nothing wrong with a little shine in your ensemble, but the key is moderation. Having a few elements of sparkle throughout your outfit, like belt, shoes, and watch, is much more harmonious than one big block of shiny fabric on your top half. That's where the muted matte finish of a parka trumps the noisy shine of a puffer. If it's the functionality of a puffer jacket that you're looking for, then we'd suggest waterproof waxed coats as an alternative. Offering from heritage brands like Bellstaff and Barber have been iconic options for decades. And it's because they work at keeping the elements out, all while being a lot more stylish than a chunky down jacket. Now you can also find our thoughts on this type of jacket, whether it's something like the Bedale model from Barber or Bellstaff's leather and cotton options of the Trial Master jacket. But safe to say either of these options are going to look far better when paired with classic clothing than a puffer jacket would. The only downside you might experience with this style is a reduction in warmth, as they don't possess the layers of down feathers throughout the jacket's construction. So our advice here would either be to layer up and use this jacket as a waterproofing external layer, or look to our third suggestion for puffer jacket alternatives, the duffel coat. 
being manufactured from a hardy wool outer. A true duffel coat should have weight and presence to it when worn. It mirrors the sort of elegant lines you might expect to see in other classic coat options, but retains a relaxed elegance in its detailings. If you're a fan of the horizontal stitching in a puffer jacket, you might be pleasantly surprised by how closely the taco closure of this jacket resembles this design feature. But you certainly won't be surprised how easily a duffel coat slots into a collection of classic clothes. Essentially, if you're looking to wear your suit with a casual coat, a duffel coat is the one to choose. Just don't make the same mistake as Raphael and choose radiation green as the color. Coming back to the main question for today, are puffer jackets timeless or trend? Realistically, it's all about context. See, puffer jackets come with a long and varied history, and although they've gone through many different trends throughout the years, they remain a practical garment. As much as we love a well-made classic overcoat, there are simply some situations where a good puffer jacket is the right choice. After all, they're created with extreme weather in mind, whereas an elegant top coat is created with elegance in mind. And there really just isn't an elegant way of fighting off a snowstorm. So a simple puffer jacket of good construction could very well be seen as a timeless piece. That being said, what is even more prevalent within the world of puffer jackets is their ability to be used as a means of looking trendy. Not only do they largely remain as a casual item that you're more likely to see with sportier streetwear, they are also used by modern menswear influencers as a means of breaking the mold of what is and is not acceptable to be worn with formal clothing. And for us, a puffer jacket suit is like oil and water. Therefore, based on the numbers, we're going to have to rule that puffer jackets are a trend if you're a lover of classic style. I'm curious, based on what we've explored today, where do you stand on the topic of puffer jackets? Do you agree with our assessment that they're a trend? Or are you on the side of timeless? Let us know where you think puffer jackets should be placed and why in the comments below. Today I'm wearing a blue and white striped button down shirt, a black puffer jacket with dark denim and brown boots. I have on Fort Belvedere socks that are mustard yellow with a burgundy shadow stripe. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these. <laughs> Thank you.